Some say that drones are a force multiplier like many others. Well, I would say that drones are a force multiplier like no other. It took just a few days after the appearance of the Light Shahid 136 drone in Ukraine before having articles like these in the international press. Yes, some experts have suddenly discovered that defending from a low technology offense may require a high technology defense. And when the defense is more resource intensive than the offense, then the offense is winning. And this is not a minor problem. So NATO at the moment of filming this video is mostly unprepared to face this type of air power. Or better, NATO forces would bleed themselves to death trying to defend against an organized offensive based on low-cost drones. Because they will have only very expensive countermeasures to use. Like this. Don't be fooled, a full complement of rounds for a AAA gun costs like a car and the rounds are not as readily available as you may think. So ironically, high-techs and sophisticated armed forces like those used by NATO and US are the most vulnerable to this kind of offensive. So yeah, we must find a solution. point before starting. Money in wartime is generally never a problem, but the availability of resources is. In this video I'm using money as a proxy for resources, but be aware of this. The problem is not new at all. For example, when the Soviets started relying more and more on salvos of anti-ship missiles to contrast the US and NATO carriers, the problem of defending against them became apparent. So the best solution would have been to attack the launcher before launching it, but it was a risky proposition. I mean, don't get me wrong, the F-14 would have done a great job, uh, but this particularly with those missiles. A second layer was needed, which meant guided missiles. This generated a large family of famous weapons, the Terrier, the Tartar, and the now ubiquitous standard. SM2, SM3, SM6. And don't get me wrong, this may work very well, but this is not a clever solution. The defensive weapon must be highly capable because it must work against the most lethal threats at the longer range possible. But when the threat is an old missile or a relatively cheap drone, well, the ship is already equipped with those high-end defenses and these will still require one or two of these very expensive missiles to be shot down. So, in general, the attacker will try to force the defender to expand its own high-end defenses against old missiles, cheap drones, before coming in with the high-end threats. So a saturation attack may consume fewer of the attacker's resources than those necessary to defend against them, and this means the offense has an advantage. Until recently the problem was only naval. Yes, because ground-based air defenses were mostly designed to engage aircraft. Since an aircraft is more complex than a missile and it is engaged with a cheaper weapon, all was good. So a high-end cruise missile is a high-end threat, so it's okay to engage it with a high-end defense. This changed radically in the last decade when RPVs and drone technology entered their maturity. The number of the targets for the defenses grew dramatically. The variety increased dramatically as well and now we go from commercial quadcopters to near stratospheric reconnaissance platforms. Not to speak of the UCAVs, more or less stealth, that are coming online now. To shoot down a quadcopter, even an autocannon can be too expensive or too complex, but the same quadcopter could rely targeting data to the friendly artillery being as lethal as a much more complex and expensive unit. A 
relatively cheap man pad could have problems trying to shoot down a relatively cold and small platform like a loitering munition. But anything bigger, even a medium range surface to air missile, seems utterly wasted against such cheap and small targets. To cope effectively with this new type of air power, air defenses must be cheap and pervasive and Western armed forces have very little that is cheap and pervasive. Forces organized according to the Russian style are probably in a slightly better position. Even in this case, the problem is the same. Their surface to air defenses are very expensive. And the standard NATO answer, air power, which is achieving air dominance, won't help you much in this case because a fighter mission and an air-to-air -air missile seem a proportional reply against a high-end drone or a high-end cruise missile, but against something like the Bayraktar, well, it definitely seems out of proportion. Even a helicopter mission seems disproportionate. So, what are we going to do? Direct energy weapons, that is lasers, are the weapons of the future and they will always be. Actually, a weapon whose cost per round is basically just energy seems definitely a fitting tool to contrast cheap drones and small UAVs. The system itself will be expensive, but the cost of the single round will be, well, minimal. And the examples are not missing. The technology is almost ready. This is surely true for ships, but for ground forces, it is still quite a big compromise in terms of weight and size. If the system is small and light enough to be practical, then the energy throughput is probably not ideal. But we are close. However, there is another approach. The clever one. The smart one. Yes, soft kill electronic countermeasures. Just break the connection with the GPS or break the connection with the pilot or mess around with the onboard electronics and the vehicle will fall off the sky. Again, the system will be expensive to create, but the cost of the single attack will be, well, just the energy. There are several examples of systems dedicated to this task, and in many cases they did quite well. The Chinese, though, seem to be taking a different direction. They presented just a few days ago an integrated system to protect ground forces from drones. It is using a mix of machine guns, very small and cheap missiles and electronic countermeasures, all integrated around an electro-optic and radar system. So, problem solved, we are going to have a new category of system that is going to protect ground targets from drones and RPVs. So, all is good? Well, not quite. The problem is that we are going to have a new category of systems that will be effective against drones and UAVs, but not much else. Ground forces are already much more complicated than they used to be just 10 or 20 years ago, and this is adding a further level of complexity to a degree that is pretty much unprecedented. Since drones and UAVs are pervasive, these defenses need to be pervasive too. So they need to be light, cheap, they will be assigned directly to ground forces, they won't have a very long range, and they will need to cover the entire front line in depth, if not other relevant targets much deeper within the defending country. For example, a 4x4 mounted autocannon that can be used against aircraft has also some effectiveness against a tank or against an armor vehicle. 
a laser system mounted on a 4x4 will be perfectly capable against drones but will do almost nothing to a tank or any other armor vehicle. You can't even start thinking about using it against infantry or buildings. Actually, these systems will need protection and they will be a further concern for the ground forces. And they may well end up being way more complicated than some of the threats anyway. So while it is becoming possible to deny drones and UAVs activity over the battlefield, we have no guarantee that it will be as simple or as cheap as the drones are. In a different day and age, protection would have been searched for in passive measures and dispersion. Some losses would have been accepted. But today, either for ethical reasons or operational reasons, the value of the land forces is high enough that this solution is no longer acceptable. I guess what I'm trying to say is that the impact of this kind of distributed air power is going to be higher than initially thought. The incrementing capability per unit cost is much higher than with other technologies. The force multiplier is much higher than with many other technologies. Some say that drones are a force multiplier like many others. Well, I would say that drones are a force multiplier like no other. Well, I guess we will see. It will be nothing good, but we will see. However, in Ukraine we have seen something already and if you want to learn more about what drones and cruise missiles are doing in the Ukrainian theater of operations, please click the video that is going to appear beside me. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.